Hi, my name is Clarissa Ann Martinez, and I am currently here in Los Angeles, California. And I moved here in 1997 when I was 16 years old. And um, I was born and raised in the Philippines. And I am the youngest of uh, four siblings. And um, I just want to share a little bit conversation that I had with a beautiful, beautiful friend of mine, Deacon Francis Coyne. And he is actually um, a transitional deacon from um, San Francisco. Um, he got to accompany me in this sharing time as a minister, as a missionary. Um, and just carrying the heart of the Blessed Mother um, in this holy journey that, that I've been. Blessed Mother obviously is, um, has always been right behind me. Right behind me, <laughs> literally. first came across this song, um, I was in a place where just deep down inside, I just always have like this holy, holy space, like holy void in me um, as I've always been in, um, in ministry. Like in the first five years of marriage, we always thought that we were going to have a baby, even if I knew that I was my medical condition. So I grieved through that. This is all in the middle of, you know, of my being able to be available for the Lord. And so I came across this song and it just really ripped open that, that empty space again. Like literally like two, three months later, my husband and I found out that we were gonna have a child. <laughs> this is like 12 years later in our marriage. What was that experience like for you? <laughs> in, all honesty, <laughs> in all honesty, in all honesty, it's that first line that says, everything inside me cries for order. <laughs> and everything inside me wants to hide. Because I built this bubble around me that it's never going to happen. It's beautiful. It's an answered prayer. But then at that moment, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to make of that. I remember like moments of, 
um, my baby in my womb because I would just have a meltdown. I would have my episodes of just, you know, like I, I did I did grow up in a lot of that feeling of isolation and feeling of desolation. And of, uh, I feel like I'm more, I was more like in the womb <laughs> than my son, Timothy. <laughs> it was like nine months of Timothy in the womb. I was in the womb of the Blessed Mother that she had kept me there because yeah our lady of guadalupe she's the she's she's the woman she's the person that would come to me and say it's okay it's good that i would just hear the voice of my child in my womb and saying mommy we're going to be okay we're going to be okay mommy so yeah I think my son was the braver person between the two of us. It was pretty dark in that womb. So as you as you were bearing new life in yourself, you also felt like Our Lady was bearing you. All this time we've waited for the promise. All this time you've waited for my arms. Did you wrap yourself inside the unexpected? So we might know that love will go that Now you have a son? He's two. Timothy Francis Josiah. <laughs> That's a terrific name. <laughs> Timothy Francis Josiah. <laughs> It was one thing to be a spiritual mother before my being in the womb of our Blessed Mother during my pregnancy. That's one thing about being a spiritual mother, but you're right. To be a life bearer and a spiritual life bearer takes a whole different meaning, a whole different life. All of that innocence and that purity, it's like, it shines through and through. That's being a life bearer.
when you see through the life of every single thing that is happening, every single movement to the one you love. And you just respond to it. My life now is just simply responding to the life that I received from the other person. It's you, not- you, um, yeah, you have this remarkable gift. I've experienced it myself. I've received it from you. But you're able to bring Christ to birth in other people. The mystery hidden from the foundation of the world, Christ in us. The hope of glory. The life of Christ. It's heaven on earth. How could you resist that? Mary is a mother of Jesus, and she's also a mother, our mother, and the mother of the church. As a mother, she brings Christ to birth in each of us. And the way that she does that is is that she shows us what we already have. Would you agree? (laughs) You're shaking your head. (laughs) As you were saying that, all I could hear is my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for He has done great things for me. And holy is His name. After I gave birth, like my whole life wasn't like happily ever after. So I was trying to put some order in my life. And the more that I was trying to put and fit the puzzle together, the more that it wasn't working. Posadas is, is in, the, in the culture of, the, uh, uh, of our Hispanic brothers and sisters. They call it the Posadas, which is the story and the journey of uh, Mary and Joseph finding a room in the inn. Um, in the Philippines, actually, in, the, in our culture, we also call it, uh, we do have the same tradition, but we actually call it Panunuluyan. Panunuluyan means... Our hearts are Bethlehem. She says, I'm, I'm not asking for much. I just want a little place nice and cozy for my child. For my son. Life and mission is truly a mystery. And it's about entering into the mystery. And it's not just about the mystery of that mission itself, but it's the mystery, it's living the mystery of God.